yesterday, I thought this episode of Google AI News was going to be dead. There were just a couple of announcements that were kind of boring, but that completely changed today with the release of DeepThink Mode into Gemini that just made the most powerful AI model in the world, Gemini 2.5 Pro, even more powerful. I'm going to be testing it out with you today in real time with and without DeepThink Mode to see if it's worth investing into a Google AI Ultra subscription. And spoiler, it definitely is for those of you who work with math, code, or need AI to go beyond just simple questions. AI mode in Google search has been completely transformed now allowing you to upload images and so PDFs to give more context to your questions. And they're also rolling out Canvas, so soon you'll be able to turn your research into interactive documents and hopefully soon visuals with code as well. But the next part is the one I'm most excited about. You can now go live with Google Search to ask it questions in real time as if you would a real expert and it will respond back to you with links. Imagine just how easy that would make our search experience in the future. Notebook LM just rolled out video over Reviews, a new feature that allows you to turn hundreds of sources you upload into a neat video summary. Is that going to replace more tutorials? Let's see, I hope not. Either way, if you'd like me to expand this series to more tools that you're currently using in your workflow, like Claude, Perplexity, ChatGPT, make sure to comment AI in the comments. I think it would be pretty useful to you guys to just watch one episode a week and know exactly what AI updates to try out next. So make sure to subscribe to this channel and let's see what deep think mode is all about. So to get access to DeepThink, you're just going to need a Google AI Ultra subscription and then just head over to Gemini and choose the 2.5 Pro model from the drop-down list. And you should see the DeepThink button in the chat next to the video. So what makes DeepThink so special is that it takes time to properly process your question instead of just answering as soon as possible. So that makes the answers much more detailed and more accurate. It also uses something called parallel thinking. So instead of just thinking in a straight line, it explores multiple paths and ideas at the same time so the answers it gives you are much more creative and well thought out. It also uses more advanced reinforcement learning techniques meaning that it learns from its attempts better so the more you're using it the better it gets. So in short DeepThink makes Gemini much smarter, more creative, and improve over time as you're using it. To test it out, I thought it would be boring for you to just sit through me asking AI legal and math questions. So we're going to develop a set of interactive apps on Canvas instead with and without thinking mode so you can see which one does better. So for a first test, I'd like to create a real-time interactive fluid simulation using HTML Canvas and JavaScript. We just click and drag your mouse and it creates this fluid stirring effect in different colors. So this is the prop I'm going to use. I'm just going to send that into Gemini 2.5 Pro first and you'll see that it starts working with Canvas directly. And now I'm going to do the same with Think Mode. And as you can see, it starts generating my response and it says that it's going to take a few minutes. So let's see what Gemini generated first. So without Thinking Mode, this is the first Canvas we got. It kind of doesn't really work at all. There's no fluid, just looks awful so let me just say it doesn't work in the chats and this is the second version i mean it's not bad and it definitely works it's just a little bit pixelated and not full screen and once you draw a couple of times the screen just goes white and doesn't work anymore now this is what deep think just generated it doesn't have a canvas integration yet but you can fix that super easily by just copying the code pasting it into a new chat and saying something like recreate the same code on canvas and this is the app we got here now first of all it worked from the first try and it just looks so much better not pixelated and i can kind of play with it eternally and it never goes white or quits on me and i just prefer the look of it so much more so even though deep think a few more moments it only took it one try so i could definitely go without it it would just take me much longer to achieve the same result next we're going to use web audio api and html to have gemini generate ambient music on canvas with an interactive star field where stars pulse in sync with the music now let me just go ahead and paste that prompt into gemini with and without think mode now this took me about five prompts and two different chats to even make it work without think mode and here's what we got I mean, the sound is really annoying. The stars do move, but they don't pulse to the sound, not to mention they don't really look like stars. I'm sure if I sat here all day, it would work eventually, but it's nothing compared to what we just got out of Deep Think Boat. Now, this is the first version and it already looks so much more realistic. Now, the music is relaxing, but the stars also aren't pulsing. So let's go back to Think Boat and ask it to change that. And this is the second version. 
I think this is excellent with just one round of changes and it really takes feedback seriously instead of just saying it made the changes but then it didn't. Now for our final test, I wanted to create a 3D visual of a cyberpunk city and normal Gemini just didn't work here at all. The screen just went black or we got this one huge circle in the middle of the screen that looked nothing like a city. And this is what Deep Think gave us. I mean, it also didn't really work, but I think you can definitely see the difference. At least the rectangles kind of resemble buildings. I'm sure it would work with a couple of modifications, but this is where I hit the limit with Deep Think. I only tested it out with about eight prompts before reach the limit and although the outputs were pretty detailed that's quite expensive for just a prompt so is it really worth the money i do think d think is extremely useful and saves you time on advanced questions but it's also pretty expensive so i'd only invest in it if i really needed it for coding advanced math business strategies or if you're using it with other google ai ultra features like vo3 and flow otherwise it just doesn't make sense to pay that much speaking of ai news i just came across an ai tool that came out recently it's not from google but it's going to make you 10 times more productive it's called proacta and it's an all-in-one ai tool that listens to everything meetings calls youtube videos voice notes, you name it. All you need to do is just hit record and it will start transcribing everything in real time and then give you a detailed timeline, smart summary, key takeaways, to-do lists, and even AI suggestions. So say you've got five meetings today, your boss just sent you 10 voice messages and you still need to watch my update on Google AI. There's no need to juggle between five different AI tools anymore. Whenever you need it, you just turn on Proactor and you'll have your whole workday saved in one place. No more messy notes, no more typing during calls, no more forgetting what was just said five minutes ago. It's perfect if you're someone who needs to be present in conversations, whether you're podcasting, interviewing, learning or collaborating. So go ahead and try out Proactor with my link in the description and let's get back to Google AI news. Next, I've got excellent news for Google search users in the US. AI mode now allows you to upload images and soon PDFs to give AI more context to your question. To use it, just head over to search, click AI mode, and you can now upload or drag and drop any file here and say something like summarize these slides and it will retrieve the information from your files and then suggest follow-up questions about it that you can just click through and get instant answers to. This is such a great way to do your research and interact with files all at the same time. Google are also rolling out Canvas to AI mode and now you can turn your research into an interactive study guide or any type of plan. Just ask a question and below the answer, click to create a study guide with Canvas and it will open up this document with images that you can edit and ask questions about. This week, you can have all of the information you've just found put into a file that you can just export to Google Docs. Google is also rolling out Search Live, where you can just open your camera and ask AI questions as you would a real expert. It will answer you in real time with easy access links. Let's go ahead and see what it's going to be like. I'm about to do the elephant toothpaste experiment. That's a fun one. Get ready for a bubbly blast. Oh, wow. What's the science behind this? The yeast acts as a catalyst, which speeds up the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. The dish soap traps the oxygen, creating bubbles and foam. How can I make this more impressive? Try using a taller and narrower container to make the foam shoot higher, adding more yeast and using warm water to speed up the reaction. It's so exciting to see Google rolling out more and more features to search. I think in just a year from now, the Google It experience will be completely replaced with AI. Earlier this week, Google has also announced a couple of huge updates coming to Notebook LM. First, they're launching Video Overview, a new feature that allows you to turn your sources into video summaries. So imagine uploading a whole book as a PDF and then transforming it into a video tutorial with images. Here's what it's going to look like. All right, folks, let's do a quick rewind of our epic field trip at Pinnacles National Park and what we learned about plate tectonics. Our tour guide, Alex, described Pinnacles as this giant geological puzzle. Oh, remember this photo from the hike up? What a beautiful shot. The history behind Pinnacles, as we learned, is fascinating. From 200 million years ago all the way to today, let's review the plate boundary types. Divergent, that's when plates pull apart. Convergent is sort of the opposite. 
It's when a plate dives beneath another. We're also getting a huge update in this studio panel. It will now allow you to generate several audio overviews in the same notebook. So imagine you have a huge one with all of your support pages and you have colleagues all across the world in Germany, Spain and France. Well, now you can generate several audio overviews in each language in the same notebook and then just share it with your colleagues and everyone can listen to the audio overview in the native language. So there won't be a need to create a new notebook or delete the audio overview to generate a new one. So that's everything Google released this week. If you'd like me to expand this series to other AI tools, make sure to comment them down below. I mostly just use Gemini for workspace, Google AI Studio, Notion, and ChatGPT in my workflow. So let me know which AI tools you're currently using. If you missed out on any of the previous episodes, click to watch this playlist right here to catch up on all of the latest Google AI news updates. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.